Okay, it looks like we're live. Hello, everyone. Can you hear us? We want to. We need to do a mic check and a live stream check. Can you hear us and can you see us? Can you please respond yes in the comments? Welcome. Welcome to Primetime Pickleball's first YouTube live feed. All right. We All have right. A, yep. Sweet. From Kathy, Kathy Clemens. Awesome. Yes, from Katrina Briones. Nice, yes, we can hear you and see you. Awesome. Okay, so we have confirmation on that. So welcome and hello to, like Jordan said, our first um, live stream ever for Primetime Pickleball. I'm Nicole, and this is Jordan. Hey, guys. He's How you doing? Somewhat recognizable, I guess, from the 100, 100 or so videos we have on our channel. So again, welcome, and thank you so much for being here. And the main reason we're doing this, going uh, live with you today, is really to celebrate the fact that our channel has hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, which we're super happy about and super excited about. And we definitely could not have done it without you. Uh, so thank you so much for watching our videos, for sharing our videos, for liking them, and the comments we get, both positive and negative, <laughs> although they're overwhelmingly positive. So yes. thank you so much. We really, really appreciate it. So before we get kicked off here into the Q&A section, which we'll do in a bit, we wanted to cover a few things to give you a bit more of a behind the scenes look on primetime. I mean, mostly um, you guys see the, the videos and that gives some insight into what we're doing, but really doesn't necessarily show <laughs> the personal side all, all that much. So we wanted to give you a little bit more insight about like how the channel got started. Um, Jordan, in a recent video, the New Year's video covered how we met, um, and sorry, he did cover how we got started, but I wanted to, to talk a bit about why we started the channel. Um, we started, uh, I'm, I'm not going to mention the, <laughs> the month, okay. so we started around 18 or so months ago, give or take, and uh, we're super happy about the how well we were, how well it was received, and one of the reasons that we started the channel is because we we looked around on YouTube and we saw we did see some great channels like Third Shot Sports has a very good channel, Deb Harrison has a good channel. They were around at that time. I think Sarah Ansbury has has had and still has a channel, although she's not really posting so much anymore. But definitely there was some um, good content on there for sure. But there was room for more. I mean, it's it, I don't know if you guys know, you may or may not, but there's a lot that goes into producing these videos. I mean, Jordan spends a ton of time like getting, making sure he gets the content right, researching it, planning the video, then arranging someone to be there to hit with them, and also then taking the time to go out and shoot it. Like that takes a crazy amount of time, more than you might ever think. And in addition to that, then I get the footage and I edit it, I make the thumbnail, you know, add any kind of overlays, so that that post production is no joke. That takes an inordinate amount of time. So we, but we do that because we love it, and we we definitely saw an opening for more because those channels as great as they're doing, and they're still putting out great content. We know how much time it takes them to get videos out, and you can only do so much. So we wanted to like add to that and bring more helpful content out there, and also do it from like our perspective. I mean, we're kind of like the only man-woman team out there, so that brings uh, a certain angle of perspective uh, in terms of the content we produce. We also shoot with two cameras, which uh, doesn't seem like anybody else really does. I mean, Jordan is a top, top player, as most of you probably know. He doesn't want me to talk about his recent <laughs> world ranking, so I'm not going to, but it's very high. And uh, <laughs> So yeah, that's basically why we started. We, we wanted to bring you guys more great content in addition to what's already out there. I'm a pretty seasoned tennis coach, so I'm pretty good at like technical stuff. Jordan is as well, and we collaborate on the content, and we're always striving to make it better. We think that we're maybe one of the more, more detailed videos out there. Also, it might help that we're like kind of tag teaming it. I think a lot of other people are doing the footage and the editing one person, which is, as we said, it's really That's a monumental a task. So to breaking it up between two people is, is much more helpful and, and doable. Um, yeah, so that's basically why we got started. And, and that, in addition to, we want to help grow the game because 
we I discovered the game early early to mid 2017. Met Jordan shortly thereafter. He was playing for what like two two three yeah, years two, before two that, years. Yeah. and we both just really love the game. I yeah. love it. Like I'm unfortunately not able to play right now, but hopefully that's going to change soon. But I really enjoy still being connected with it. Love the friends I've made, and want and love making the videos for you guys. Um, yeah, yeah. I think that's about it as far as why we're going to keep making videos for you, and we we hope they're continually helpful. Yeah. So yeah, just uh, again, thank you guys so much. We couldn't do this without you. And uh, yeah. That, uh, Is that okay? Yep. That's, okay, so, so going on next thing. Great. So that's why. And if you have any other questions on that, you can ask those. We'll answer those. They may have come in already. I don't know. I haven't had a chance to look, but we can answer more about about prime time in the question and answer portion of the video. Um, okay. So in addition uh, to that, uh, we we definitely appreciate and see all the comments. We read every single comment. Jordan responds to every single comment pretty much without fail. Um, they're overwhelmingly positive, like 99% of the time, which we really appreciate that you love what we're doing. Obviously, this people subscribe, so that's an indication that we're headed in the right direction as well. We welcome the feedback, both good and constructive. Um, we definitely consider, uh, we appreciate the good, good feedback, as I said, but certainly the constructive criticism, we, we look at it, we take it on, and we, I don't know if you noticed, but we definitely make changes where we can and where it makes sense. Not all of the changes go through because there may or may not be a certain reason as to why we're not doing it that way that we we can't really ex explain properly in a comment or just doesn't really need to be explained. So just please know that we appreciate the comments, we read them, and we do factor them in. And if you feel that we have not um, changed something that you suggested, then there is a reason for it because we did see it and yes. we did consider it. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, we also love when you drop us comments about what videos you'd like to see next. Yes, definitely. Uh, so please continue doing that. That's the best place to do it, to drop a comment pretty much on any video. It doesn't have to be related to that video. Just go to the comment section of any video and let us know a future video that you'd like us to consider and we will very likely put it on the list we've already been doing that people have dropped requests often we already have a video of, of what they're asking for so we send them to that and they may not have known because we have like a hundred now but if we don't have it then we will strongly consider making it and we have done so in I would say especially the last 20 videos or so some of those are definitely request videos all right so that pretty much covers um, the opening thoughts that I had for the live stream. And I will say that one of the main questions we get is, what paddle are you using, Jordan? Yes, <laughs> so I get that a lot. We yeah. haven't, we've kind of just mentioned it in the comments, but we haven't really talked about, or Jordan hasn't talked about why he chooses the paddle that he does. So now Jordan's going to go ahead and talk about the paddle he uses and why, and just everything you could possibly want to know about that paddle. So. Yeah, cool. So, uh, yep, I use the Engage Elite Pro Maverick. It's right here. I have two of them. I usually keep two paddles in my bag just in case, um, I don't know, if one would break or something like that. But this is a paddle <laughs> that um, Ben Johns um, currently uses, and I they have them in different colors, <laughs> orange, blue, red, and <coughs> black. Um, but yeah, I like I really like this purple color. It's pretty cool. Anyways, it's just over a hundred dollars. It's one hundred twenty-four dollars on the Engaged website, and it's uh, elongated paddle, so it's it's longer than the standard paddle. It's sixteen and a half inches from the bottom to the top, and it has the six-inch grip, which I really really like. Uh, it has a polymer core, and this paddle, the one I actually play with, is probably around nine and a half. Um, ounces. So the reason why I really like this paddle is that the sweet spot sits up a little bit higher, probably like around here, sits up a little bit higher than the average paddle and you can get a, a lot more leverage on, on your shots, especially um, from what I, what I feel, it's definitely like my ground strokes and my top spin um, volleys from the net. So I really like that. So. And this longer grip, if you're coming from, 
if you're coming like from tennis especially and maybe other racket sports like racquetball or squash and things like that this longer grip is probably something more natural um one big reason for this long grip that i really like is i could fit two hands on the paddle for for my backhand so it's, it's kind of one of the shots i've been working on in my game especially for singles like my two-handed backhand um coming from tennis that's what i'm used to so i i really like that and yeah, I'm just going to talk a little bit. A lot of people ask me about uh, the tape. I, as you can see on the different videos, I've had different colors um, in, in different videos, but I went with purple right now because it, it kind of matches the purple on here. It's, it's really cool. This is just on, you can get this at any home improvement store. So like Home Depot or Lowe's or, or Amazon, uh, this is just electrical tape, colored electrical tape. And the cool thing about it is it is like the exact size of the, uh, the edge guard. So it looks really clean. Um, and I also just recently, uh, for a few months, I've been playing just with a stock, I think seven and a half ounce paddle. And um, yeah, so I, I can move it like really fast, but uh, I just, um, now I'm experimenting with putting a little bit of weight. So I probably put an ounce on on the uh, edge here um, I, I've been experimenting just putting it from here to here but I actually started putting it all the way around and I, I think that effect is it feels really solid um, you can get this it's underneath this tape right here but it's it's called lead tape you can get it from any a lot of stores are online uh, or even like at a golf store they'll sell lead tape so I, I just I put it all the way around I put about an ounce and it actually makes the paddle feel more solid. Um, I, I just think so. So uh, yeah, and the grip I use, there's um. So when you when you buy a paddle online or wherever you get it, it comes with a stock grip. And um, what I do is I put an a replacement grip. So I've experimented with also a lot of different grips. I would suggest that you just use uh like tennis i think tennis grips are really good if you're going to just put an over grip uh, which is a really thin layer but this is a, a replacement grip so what i did is i this is a replacement grip i put on top of the stock grip so this is definitely a lot thicker than probably what the most the majority of players play with but um i actually use this brand called caracal so you can look it up um and it's it's I really like it. It's very it's very soft and has a lot of cushion. So yeah, that's um that is why I use this paddle. I really love it a lot. So should I talk about this now? Um, yeah. Okay. Jordan's gonna gonna add a few more things that we'd like to talk about. But before we do mm -hmm. that, I just wanted to get ready for the Q and A portion right after that. So if you we I see some questions have come in, which is great. Um, but go ahead and just start dropping your questions in now, and um, once we get to that, after Jordan covers this next section, we will start answering questions after that. All right. Yeah, so um, I just want to mention a couple of things um, that's going on in our primetime lives here. Um, the first thing is the Golden State Championships Tournament. This is a, a really, really awesome Tier 2 huge tournament in Northern California. It's uh, in the Bay Area where where we are from, Nicole and I, and uh, it's a tournament that my wife Katrina and I run. It's at the end of July, so the very last weekend of July. Just want to throw it out there for all of you. Um, you guys are from all over the nation, but um, yeah, I'm just sending a formal invitation. We would really love to see you there. It's uh, we had a lot of a lot of pros last year, and this year we expect even more. So um, yeah, for the pros, uh, we're, the prize pool is like fifteen thousand dollars, and yeah, we're super excited about the tournament. So yeah, I just want to throw that out there. And then the next thing is uh, yeah, so I got invited to play in this pickleball global cup event in in Florida. So. Just be on the lookout for that. We'll, we will probably be posting more about that on the Primetime Pickleball Facebook page. But basically, they're doing a Team East versus Team West. And I'm very fortunate to be invited to play. So 
Yeah, I'm super excited about that. That's at the end of April. So maybe I'll do some some live streams and, or you know go, live feeds from from there. But that's a week before the U.S. Open. I'm super excited to play in that as well. So, yeah, great. All right, all right, that covers it. Okay, all right. So that's uh, pretty much all the topics and announcements that we had to cover as we opened. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and answer your questions. So. All right. Let's take it from the top. <clears throat> uh, I see a lot of good, you know, thank you comments. We so appreciate that. So, but the first question is from Bob McIntyre. How do you return hard side slice spin shots? That's me. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, I'm assuming this means a, a pretty like direct slice with a lot of side spin on it. That's kind of kicking left or kicking right. So. <clears throat> Yeah, that can be very challenging, and as the game evolves, like a, a lot of people, I can put some really like aggressive slice on their shots, both top spin, pure slice under spin, and slice with some right or left cut on it, not some like a lot, and the ball actually does bend. So <clears throat> that's becoming more and more common, and if it's pretty, if it's coming pretty hard and flat with the bend, like sure, you have to read, you have to read it really well. So that's that's the number one thing is like you have to. You have to kind of see it before they've struck it. You can tell based on how someone swings yeah. how the ball's gonna how that's gonna cut the ball. So before they even struck it, as they're coming into the shot, like I've you have to learn to read that as they approach into the shot. And that way you can brace yourself, like, okay, he's coming in this way and that's gonna make the ball cut left. So you have to get ready for that. This ball is gonna bounce and cut away from me if it's coming to my backhand, or if it bounces more to the right, it's gonna cut into my body. So you already have to start preparing ahead of time for the either extra space you're gonna to need to build in if it's gonna cut into your body, set up further away. <clears throat> and if it's gonna bounce and cut away, you have to recognize that very early. And so you have to, it's like Wayne Gretzky said, it's like you gotta skate to where the puck is gonna be, right? So you gotta see where that your your ideal contact is gonna be and visualize it ahead of time and get there. Because if you plant as if it's gonna be a true bounce, you're gonna be either reaching or like, it's gonna be jamming you the body. So the key is recognition. You have to learn to develop that skill of, how much cut did they put on it, and how how much action is that going to produce after the bounce? <clears throat> and the better you get at reading that, it really becomes a lot easier to handle those, even if they're coming hard. Because so the key is to learn to read it ahead of time and be prepared for where it's going to be, so that you kind of kind of envision it. Yeah. It's if you're if you're reacting, that's where the problem comes in. If you have no sense of like what's going to happen off the bounce, that's the main main thing. Yeah, so other? that's that's really good. Yeah, definitely. I totally agree 100% with Nicole um, about reading it early. Um, and, and just to expand, just definitely giving space. I, I play with a lot of a lot of top players and they they do a lot of crazy spins and stuff like that on the ball. One thing that I do, um, I, I definitely just give myself more space. So like if, if I see that they really cut or, or really cut the ball really well, I'm gonna I'm gonna give myself some space, which means I'm gonna back up maybe a step or two, just so as the ball hits, it kind of just slows down a little bit. I have more time to, to prepare and hit it. But definitely, um, yeah, it's it's definitely uh, first of all reading and sh and um, anticipating where the ball is gonna go. So. Yeah, and awesome. one more thing in addition to, to that, that's a, that's a great point, in addition to more space, which you definitely want, the, you're not gonna get a true response. Like if you if you try to come at it directly, you have to count, you have to account for the fact that it has spin, it's gonna deflect some off of your paddle. So you kind of have to come in in such a way where you're countering that spin in your that's swing. Good. You're counter impacting the rotation. Because if you come at it directly, it's not gonna go where you expect. It's gonna, it's gonna have a rebound. That's good. So that's one more thing. That's Thank you, Bob, for it. that question. Awesome. All right. Hope that answered your question. Um, looking for this. Thanks for okay. D, D, D W Thank Marshall. You. Thanks for the con thanks for the congratulations on the ten thousand milestone. Yeah. Thank Lots you so of much. thank yous here. We really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for blessing us. You're welcome. All right, here Shout we go. out to Mark and Sarah. Okay. Yeah. Shout I'll, out. I'll read this one. Yeah. Okay. From, this is from George. Um, how do you play against teams? that are good at ankle shots at the kitchen. 
keep the ball in the middle between them. I think he's asking, do you keep the ball in the middle um, so they between, can't produce between the, the players? So yeah, I'll just, um, I think that's, yeah, I think that's a really good point. Um, what I've learned, I so when I play, I, I mostly, depending on who I play, I, I really like keeping um, the ball cross court. So when I'm on the, uh, the even side or the odd side, just because like in a, our previous video that we've that we put out the the nets lower and and also I'm gonna have more margin dinking cross court. But when I run into players, there's certain players that really really are good at cutting the ball or putting a lot of slice on the ball. So yeah, definitely one way that you can kind of counter that is is keep the balls more to the middle um, because the more angle you give them they're going to have more to work with and they're going to, they're going to slice it even more. So for those players that, that do that kind of thing and you can't handle that. Yeah. I would definitely um, keep more balls more towards the middle of the court. Okay. And I, I, you don't have to dink to the middle all the time, but just remember the more angle you give them, the more that they can actually um, counter that with more spin. So yeah, definitely. That's a good point. This is also part of his question. Or play even sharper angles that force them to ATP. What do you think about that? Um, I def well at the higher at the higher levels, even at the let's say you get the four oh, even four five and above, the AP ATP is a shot that's utilized um, very very often. So no, I I I wouldn't suggest going going sharper and sharper because the better players are going to are going to make the the round the post shot. Um, probably 90% or higher at the time. So I don't like I don't like giving them the sharper angle. I like when players do that to me because obviously hitting the round the post shot is one of the, the most fun shots in the game. That's what makes the game really fun. So yeah, um, yeah. so keep your dinks to the middle more and, and just, just mixing it up. So another thing is um, that I, I've learned, I used to really just try to lock in and stay cross court with a player and Depending on the team we're playing, you know, that's really important. There's a lot of different variables, but like let's say in a tournament, yeah, you're probably going to want to dink to the, the weaker player. But in, in this situation, let's say I'm hitting three dinks cross court to this person that really knows how to slice the ball. I don't want to give them two or three um, of the same shot. So let's say I, I dink to his this his really strong um, backhand slice. Let's say that's his um, – that's his strength. If I give him two or three, he's just he's just like getting in the groove and he's gonna hit everyone even better. So I wanna hit one to the backhand, I wanna hit one to the forehand, maybe move it down the line. That's when I suggest that you gotta move the ball so they're not perfectly anticipating the next shot. So that that's gonna help out a lot as well. Yeah, that's Perfect. I totally agree with that. I also want to point out one thing. I think when Jordan says hitting, he said, keep in mind, he said hitting more to the middle. He's not saying hit middle every time, like middle of the court. He's saying like middle, body, like hit it to a player or kind of center somewhere in that body range and towards middle, not like sharp angle because angle begets angle. And if you kind of surprise them, that's great. But if they see it coming then and they get a good set on it, then they have a lot of angle to work with yes. or because they just pop it down the line on you too, which it, one of the things is you want to, yeah, you want to be controlling the angles on the court because that's the one thing that can hurt you because the more you go wide, the more court you expose to your opponent if they're ready for it, which is why the ATP is so dangerous. Like If someone's hitting an ATP, that team for that at that moment in time is is in the driver's seat because if they make that ATP, you guys are really in trouble. Even if even if you're really good at going out there to get it, to, to defend yeah. the ATP, yeah. you hit yeah. out of there, your team is super out of position. So you really never want to set up for, for giving them an ATP. Okay. All right, um, next would, question. Go ahead. Thomas Angeloni, which lines are in and out if you hit the kitchen line on serve, sideline, back, back line, center line? Yeah, great, great question. Um, yeah, and, and just to um, let you know, yeah, any questions that you have, just go ahead and drop them, even if you think that um, they're simple questions. No, no question is, is not a good question. This is a great question. So uh, during a rally, all all the lines, um, the sidelines and the baseline are in. So if the ball hits the line, it's good. Just on the serve, if you're serving, 
and you hit that kitchen line on on the your opponent's side that's going to be a fault you actually need to clear the kitchen line on the serve but the, if you hit the sideline that that's still good okay we're just talking about i mean yeah the sideline is still good past the kitchen line that's what i want to clarify but um yeah so all the lines are in in a rally and um only the on the serve that the kitchen line is is a fault you have to actually clear that clear that kitchen line yep so that's it yeah all lines are in except for that at one instance when you're serving um okay uh from harry hutchins how do you see the game changing at the 4.0 level and up? great question cool okay so that yeah that is a very good question what you know, more and more uh i think we're gonna see you know the pretty much everyone everyone preaches like okay third shot what do you do you drop it and in in a lot of instances that is the best thing to do but it's becoming clear that more and more the top at the top level the level they're mixing in hard drives for the third or fifth or seventh they're just speeding it up a lot more trying to beat them with power maybe outright on that shot or get it hard and kind of low and force a pop-up that yeah. either then they can hit a drop to advance to the kitchen on the fifth shot or if it's popped up high enough then they'll drive it again so we're gonna I think we're gonna see a lot more like driving to either set, to either produce an opening to come up to the line or just like more going outright for a pop-up to then boom boom and ending it so I think there's gonna there's gonna continue there is already power co has come and it's just gonna keep on getting better and it, it's it's getting harder to get to the line honestly because serves are getting like deeper harder mm, that's a good point. everyone's they're able just to keep you back more like the traditional like get the serve in is that's that's dying like I mean if you're just getting the serve in and that's that's fine like if you're playing rec and you know that's that's what you want to do and everyone wants to come to the kitchen and have a, a dink rally that's perfectly fine but if you're going for the competitive tournament level and you want to advance and do well in tournaments be on the podium get medals and whatnot you're going to have to deal with the fact that you need not only, you need the soft game and you need the hard game yeah. it's not one it's not it's not either it's not one or the other you're going to have to develop both and know, learn when to use them because there is a time to use them and that's yeah. just where it's going yeah so that's totally agree and and the last thing nicole just said is um just learning the time to use them and i think that's really important depending on the team you're playing as well right um a lot of like certain teams let's say their their hands are as not are not as good at the net and you're you know you tend to drive the ball more on your thirds. Um, I think that that's a really important point. Um, and depending on also also the score, things like that, like you could take more risks when when you're maybe up by a lot, you know. And so those are those are there's a lot of things to factor in. But the question was, yeah, do, at the four level and up, do you see the game changing? Yeah, I think it's going to be um, there's going to be yeah, there's going to probably be more um driving from the baseline and also just at the net just just probably more um of speeding up the game quicker maybe and and yeah we'll just we'll just definitely see and it, this is why it's really awesome to experience this as a and for us to see the game of pickleball evolving and it's really awesome to see these players come from um tennis backgrounds and also other racket sports but it's yeah it's just it's getting um yeah really it's gonna getting a lot harder and harder um but yeah I, we definitely see it going that way but definitely it's controlling controlling the ball wh whether you're hitting a third shot drop that's really soft right or these players that that are they're not just banging the ball at the, at the top level they're controlling the ball but they're controlling it with very very fast pace so no matter if they look like they're just banging the ball, they're actually, I mean, they're ha hitting it with, with really good precision and they're keeping the ball low and, and maybe even dipping towards down at the feet. And that's when um, it can cause errors or pop up. So definitely um, the hard game and the soft game to become a complete pickleball player is very important. Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. Next question is from 
Josh Hasanori. I hope I got that right. Everyone tells you to relax during the tournament. What are two top things that help you relax for those first two games? Okay, so I think you're saying, yeah, when you yeah. first show up in a match, the first yeah. first two games? Yeah, like the games? first two games. Like when you, when you, I think he's asking when you enter a tournament, your yeah. first two games, like, you know, you're, to get the nerves out. Like, what match like match one match two or the first two games within just the probably first two games okay all right so first. you go for it I, i'm not sure I understand it, but go well ahead. actually so i actually um i'm actually not playing that many tournaments this year but um yeah so for the tournaments i do play it is really tough it's really tough i think that you need to kind of set a routine um about what you do and, and try to prepare mentally whatever that is I'm like obviously not a mental coach or anything like that, but I think a, root, a routine would help. Um, the same way you warm up in 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 rec, and, and this is why we are really um, advocates of drilling and, and warming up before you play, because a lot of players just go out there and they just they're just gonna they literally I've seen players like literally hit like for like 30 seconds and then okay let's let's play a game so yeah really just warming up and and getting your routine down um and then from that you can kind of build on that but it's definitely very tough to to actually prepare for a tournament because you know you have all those nerves and then you have like a lot of stuff going on but i definitely just think you know you're there you know hit i would suggest that you just hit the same shots that you would and, uh, you know, when you're when you're playing serious in a rec game, don't go for anything too too fancy. You know, you really want to, you know, hit within your means, basically. Don't go for anything too much. But if you if you see balls that, that are up or balls that you could potentially put away, you need to go for those shots. Um, definitely when the score is tighter, you might be a little bit more conservative. But I think in the when you first start the first few points, you need to just really just play within your means, hit the shots that you know are going to be high percentage shots. And um, yeah, and, and if they're, they're balls that are up, you really got to go for those. So so in addition, that's all great stuff. You definitely need to get your body warmed up uh, for, for the game. But I think you're asking like more like the mental side, which I haven't played as of yet any pickleball tournaments, but I've played just a ridiculous amount of tennis tournaments. So I'm very familiar with competitive sports and to definitely get your body warmed up, but that's like pretty straightforward. Okay, so you're gonna go hit your dinks, you're gonna take serves, you're gonna hit returns, what whatnot. The the less like tangible side is what you do with your mind. So before you as you're getting into the tournament, like Jordan said, you want a routine, you wanna you you wanna start, you know, pack your bag the night before or whatever your routine is, it just can't be nothing. It, 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 Jordan and I might have to, two totally different routines. But they all involve some kind of mental preparation. Like maybe he, I pack my stuff the night before. Maybe he packs his morning of. But like it's consistent. So you want yeah. to develop your like pr before tournament schedule. Make sure you have everything so you can be not nervous about that. And that as the time approaches, like take some time to yourself. Maybe go through some affirmations in your mind. And one of the main – okay, so this is a great tip that really helped me a lot when I came I, – I played college tennis at, at Cal – we would always, all, every single person, we'd have to go around and tell the coach our like three objectives for the match. And mm -hmm. mine were often That's like, um, come in a lot. So every every approach I'm coming in, high first serve percentage, and maybe I know that this player doesn't like her, maybe she doesn't like her forehand. So I'm gonna really try to attack her forehand. So I would go into every single match with three objections, not outcome objectives, not I'm gonna win 11-2, 11-3 or yeah. whatever. Yeah. It's execution ob objectives. Like what, because I only have control over those things. What can I do out on the court? I can't really control if they come out and hit 22 winners. Like that's possible. And it's it, like, it's happened to me where people will just blow me off the court because they're having such an amazing day. Even though I feel I played well, like that's, that's it place you want to be you want to be just playing a solid match every time when you lose executing on your objectives so have those in mind give yourself something to focus in on that you actually have control of that's yeah. super key and then be positive with yourself be your like own best friend out there you're out there well maybe you're with there with a partner but yeah. if you're a great if you're a great cheerleader for yourself you don't have to be saying anything overtly but if you're in your mind super positive and you're positive with them like 
everyone's going to want to partner with you. Like I learned that early on. If you're, if you're always out there, you handle yourself and then you're also able to kind of support your partner. And if you're both doing that, that's just what makes for like a super awesome team. So you need to get like your mind game right and be relaxed going in, maybe listen to like whatever music helps you get into that focused, relaxed state. Like we would roll in sometimes the nationals listening to like eight mile from what's his name? I forget. I Eminem. forget. Eminem. Yeah, we would we'd be getting pumped up coming coming into nationals for like quarterfinal or semifinal match, and we're all like rocking out to M to Eminem, and then we each then have like our own. That's still like two hours out from the match, so we then each go through our own individual routine of what we need to do to get ready for our match, whatever that may be. Maybe I I listen to music. Maybe my teammate goes in the next to a tree and like meditates or whatever you know it's just like you need to figure out what works for you to get yourself yep. in a good headspace so great, great question great question that was me sorry long-winded um this one it appears to me that at the pro level the third shot is split between drives and dinks is this a trend that you seek into it yeah. uh, we pretty much covered that yeah. that was exactly uh what we we covered for the four level mm -hmm. question where do you see prime time in the next year and three years um, okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, that's a great question. I kind of anticipated this one. Um, so uh, we do have some very specific plans for prime time. Um, some are on hold right now just because of, of my injury. Like I don't super want to go into the details of it because it frustrates me, my injury I'm talking about. But um, yeah, we have a lot of, of plans for prime time. Number one is that we could plan to continue to put out great videos. We're on a schedule of like minimum once a week right now. Jordan's life is super crazy busy right now. I'm trying to figure out my injury. So we're yeah. just, we're on hold with some of the like plans that haven't, nobody's aware of, but we're definitely gonna continue to put out more videos at least at the rate of once per week. And if we can, we'll go up to twice per week. Not sure, but minimum once per week. Um, prime time in the next three years. So. Uh, <laughs> that's about all we can say right now. Like I'm just, we just can't really, we do have things coming. So just yeah. keep an eye on us, be on the lookout. That's yep. really all we can say. I don't want to like put our plans out there and open, but there's a lot of exciting things. But coming we are, from us. we are here to help you with your game. Yes. That's, that's exactly that's, why we're here. So. And we're going to continue doing yes. that. So just please Great know that. Question. Great question. All right. Hold on. We skip one. Um, where? Right. Some oh, people sorry. say, this is from George. Um, thank you, George. Some people say to throw in a lob, but these guys are too fast and get it past them and hope for a drop into the kitchen. Did that question make sense? Um, I think he's just saying, uh, what do I, can I, can I reasonably use the lob? Um, but there are guys too fast to get it past them and hope for a drop. Oh, so I guess he's saying, we're, I'm trying to lob them and they'll get there and drop it in the kitchen. Um, Oh, some people say to throw in a lob, but these guys are too fast and get it past them and hope for a drop. And so so you guys, he's saying, okay, he can't, he can't get it past them. He's trying to get it so he gets it over oh, them and okay. makes he forces a drop, but it's not happening. That's my interpretation. Okay. Well, I just, just, to, I'll just throw it out there just to talk about lobs. I, I think that lobs are, um, could be underutilized in, in the game of pickleball. Now, I think it's a very effective shot. Um, you have to pick the right time to do it. It's definitely not a shot that you're going to be doing a lot, but um, definitely I think in, in certain scenarios, um, lob, lobbing could be a, a good option. But um, yeah, so if they are, I, if, I don't know if I understand the question correctly, but um, if you're, if it's working, yeah, then great. But if they are, if they're too fast and they let it get past them, um, I mean, if the lob is working, then yeah, go ahead and, and keep doing that. But let's say they're just like, that's not working and, and they're too fast and they're slamming the ball at you every time. Yeah, you should probably stop lobbing. But um, yeah, that, I hope that I hope that answered that. So yeah, a couple more things about the lob that's all uh, true is that um, you have to, okay, so who, who drills their lob, okay? I mean, very few people, almost nobody. So that's the number thing. If you want to use the lob, yeah. you have to drill it, and you have to drill it in such a way where you're consistent getting it high enough and so that it lands about 
no more than two feet from the baseline. Yeah. That's what it takes to hit an effective lob against a fast team that has no mobility problems. You have to hit like basically a very strong lob. It's possible, but you have to drill it. Like you're just not going to go out there and a lob on a dime every time. Yep. So number one, it's it's definitely a usable, effective strategy. I was watching a match not too long ago. Ben Johns, I think he lobbed like five or six points in a row. He then stopped doing it, but it, it was working fine because he yeah. could get it over and he could get it down and it was very deep very close to the baseline yeah. it pushed them back they had to drop it's great it's super effective even if, yep. if you can get it to bounce that's the win even if they can are able to continue the point because now you're up and they're either one back or both yeah. back chances are mm -hmm. both back so that's great it's not like you're going for a lot of winner you're just your goal is to try to get them yeah, back that's the, goal. the best the, you want to you want to basically have them leaning in so they're not expecting it number one that's that's pretty much crucial because if someone knows it's coming and they have a reasonable mobility they're going to be able to get it out of the air yeah. so it's going to be used more and more again as we said like people are getting better precision on their drives and on their soft soft shots so i think you're going to start to see it more mm -hmm. it's just you have to like work on it you can't just throw it in there and a half decent lob is really not going to achieve much yep um and then hold on so the next question great question um i'll read the next one from thomas in tennis, the serving team is the offensive team. In pickleball, the receiving team is on is the offensive team, I think he means. Do you see receiving teams setting plays like tennis poaches? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think absolutely. I mean, it's good. That's going to be – I mean, when, I, when Jordan and I were still training before I went down, we were definitely – planning what the next step is going to be he was telling me he was going to you know cross over yeah. or not cross over or he might he might come in for a poach if he's thinking that that so and so person in this formation like tends to be able to hit poachable walls to for me to look out for that yeah you definitely should be setting plays not only as the receiving team but as the serving team you want you want to be yeah. setting plays when you're on the court period if you're out there with without a plan like definitely want to plan for yourself but you need to start planning as a team and as you yeah. play more and more you, you start to pick up on that but if you if you play with different partners like I, I come back to what my experience in tennis is like we always every single time I was telling my partner I'm gonna return here and you're gonna do this yeah. or she was telling me I'm gonna serve here and I want you to, to, to poach or not poach or fake or whatever we always yeah. planned like the, at least the first like three shots and then we as a rule we knew it's a bit different in pickleball but it was so that per net player needs to be actively looking to impose them themselves like yeah. i would tell my partner like if you get stuck in a cross court rally like look for me to poach on that like yeah, third or fourth good. ball so you are planning as both teams not just for the start of the point but patterns that you're going to be running continuously that's yeah. what you want to do yeah i totally agree and just to give you guys an example um they're very good examples from from Nicole there, um, like planning the first first three points. So um, maybe shots, three shots. sorry, first three shots. So maybe telling my partner, um, a partner that I play with, his name is Dave. He's local over here, and um, yeah. So a lot of times when we play, uh, I'm I'm just honestly trying to get uh, trying to hit a hard serve, and he knows that. And and what we what we try to do usually, depending on the team we play, but if any returns that are short, he knows that I'm going to drive it or he's going to drive it. Like whoever's on the, the odd side of the court because their forehand is in the middle of the court. We kind of like to do that a lot. So just depending on, on that, I know he's going to get ready to drive it so that I have to be ready to try to close in for a poach or, or let's say his drive is, is not as good. I have to also be ready to defend. And then another thing is um, – Sometimes I, I tell him, like, let's say you, you hit a really good serve or let's say your serve's a little weaker and let's say that return, they hit just like a really massive, um, maybe slice return or really deep return and like hits the line. Uh, one thing I tell my partner is like, you really have to watch out for those deep returns because uh, I'm just trying to get it back at that point. I'm not going to hit a perfect third shot. Um, drop I'll either just drive that ball just to get it in play so that that means like we we have agreed we just need to stay back on those returns that we know that are going to be difficult uh, we just stay back 
hit that ball, get back in the point, and then on the fifth, we're gonna either you know drive it or we're going to um, you know try to proceed to the non volley zone for uh, you know for to to get to the net. Um, yeah, yeah, good stuff. All right, thanks for all these questions. They're great. One thing I wanted to mention is we were, we didn't I don't think we mentioned yet, but we did mention it in emails and on the Facebook page that we're doing a giveaway, and so stick around for that. That's coming up at the end. We're going to keep answering questions here, maybe for another what, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, we'll see. But we'll we don't want to definitely keep you on here forever. We'll go for like see how we go for about another. We're trying to hit the hour mark. Um, so that's coming up. So stay tuned for the prize giveaway. Uh, if you send me the second paddle, okay, thanks. We don't know. We don't. Uh, what are some things to get racquetball players out of the racquetball swing or maximize the swing for more consistent shots? I struggle snapping my wrist, and it leads to mm, inconsistency. That's, that's a really, really good question. Good so and tough question. I don't. I haven't played racquetball, but I definitely could see that issue. Um, what would you say, Nicole? If, okay, if someone so, comes from a, a sport that they use a lot of risk. Yeah. What would you say? That's a that's a really good question. Super good question. And I'm yeah, I'm familiar with people trying to be really snappy with the wrist and you obviously come from a sport where that's like taught and encouraged. I'm not familiar with racquetball too much, but I've definitely heard that it's a really yeah. wrist snappy swing. Yeah. So what you want to do is what, when people are trying to correct something, one of the errors I often see them making is that they're like trying to correct it off of just like regular ball. Like, like okay, Jordan, go over there and hit it to me like regular speed and I'm going to try to fix this. Like that's never going to work because there's too much going on. Like the speed, you're working on the speed, having to read the speed of the ball, you're trying to get your contact right and then you're trying to fix this crazy thing that you're trying to break. You got to really like slow things down. So like... I don't know if you're snappy on your dink or your yeah. ground stroke. I'm not sure because um, if you want to clarify, that'd be great. But like, start with like dink and make sure you're not Super you're real good. stable and not snapping yep. on the dink. Number one. Once you get that down rock solid, that's gonna help you in your ground stroke. So then you can back up yeah. and just have someone like maybe like toss a tree or just drop hit yeah. against a wall, but nice and gentle. I I do get like I coach a ton of tennis and I get some resistance when like we like slow it down, yeah. but like that's the only way to do it is you gotta take out all the other variables yeah. so you can focus on this one that you're really struggling with. Cause if you're having to deal with all these other things, it's just like not gonna happen. So you yeah. gotta really slow it down, drop feet against a wall, really focus on keeping that wrist from breaking. So like that's yeah. what I would suggest is the key is to just slow yeah. it down, not try to do it normal real time speed. Cause that's what you're struggling with. You're not gonna fix it like that way you have to start back kind of square one and build up slowly, but yeah. nail it at the lower level and then level up one, not level up all the way back to the baseline. Just yeah. make it a little harder, nail it from work, spend some time there, get it locked in at that pace and then pick up the speed, pick up the distance step by step by step by step and get up the ladder that way. Yeah, awesome. Um. Do you ever use, you use an over wrap? wrap over, I think uh, we, I kind of mentioned that. Yeah. Um, so there's there's two things. There's an over grip, the really thin ones that you can put on. Um, a lot of tennis players use that. Or, yeah, I guess that's what they're talking about. I don't use it. I actually, I just use a, repl I just use a replacement grip. And then, like I said, um, I put it over the stock grip. So I like, it, it, this is going to be a lot thicker than um, the average paddle. This is I, I like the thickness because it's closer to what I'm used to, like playing tennis and stuff. So, so I, like I said, although I'm not playing right now, I use over grips. I have a stock. I, I like the Turner uh, the Turner grip. It's the blue grip. I tend to also like sweat a lot, so I'm very conscious of needing a grip that like won't slip out of my hand once wet. So I use the that light blue Turner grip. And I've also used the Wilson Pro Overgrip, which is a pretty tacky grip. They're both different, um, but I've leaned towards using Overgrip just because I have to change my grip a lot. Jordan doesn't need to because he's not doesn't get sweaty, but like my grip wears out pretty fast. So because I'm changing so much, I I, I hate regripping uh, a. Um, hmm. Oh, what's what's I'm shoot? Not Overgrip, but the just a regular grip. Yeah, the replacement grip, right? I like I hate regripping a replacement grip because it's 
The over the over grip is a grip you could just it's you really just thin. go fast. And you and can then, just and it's really just, thin, just goes right over this one. Yeah. So I, I'm taking so. them, putting them on and taking yeah. them off like constantly. So yeah. I prefer to do it that way. So it's just kind of like personal preference. So yes, yeah. I use one, he doesn't. Good question. I really um, All right, from George. Um, I've noticed the drop shot. So he's talking about like the soft shot into the kitchen is changing from a five to six foot arc into the kitchen with no spin to mm -hmm. a backspin drop that has an arc height of three to four feet above the net. Yeah. So um, yeah, um, that has no, that has that less bounce yeah. when, it, when it bounces. And that's, that's definitely true. Um, before, um, I think even five, six years ago, like what, what we're talking about, the game has changed. So the game has changed as in, um, what is this called? Paddles and materials. Uh, <laughs> the, game, the game has changed in that um, aspect and also with people with different shots. So like at the kitchen line, people aren't just balling anymore. They're, they're hitting some top spin shots. And because of that, yeah, the, the players are getting better and better and they're, drop, they're making their third shot drops a little bit lower than maybe they used to be. And yes, and definitely with backspin, so that it can it drop and not bounce as high. But definitely, yeah, we're seeing that. Um, yeah, and if you can get that consistent, I, yeah, that's definitely, um, you obviously wanna leave margin. You don't wanna drop it a foot above the net, but like, yeah, you, you wanna get it to a consistent place where it's not, basically, so the ball, when, when you drop that third shot in the kitchen, it's not sitting up high because, yeah. When, when that ball, if you, you don't have a lot of backspin or if you're just hitting a flat high ball and then it bounces, players will just step back and they can just speed up that ball. Yeah, and, P, it, and that's exactly right. And in addition to that, people are getting much better and better at attacking balls from lower. Like yeah. it used to be like you didn't attack a ball unless it was like above the net. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's but so now true. you can effectively and people are able to do it consistently and very potently attack balls from lower and lower. So that's forced people to develop a, a third shot that doesn't, that sits lower. So it's like we've, the game has forced this, this is accurate. I've seen this ev evolution happen and the progression of the game has forced this, that you need to hit a better drop. So you gotta get a little tighter to the net and get consistent with that. It's possible three or four feet still a pretty good margin and with backspin so that it doesn't, so it sits up as low as possible. You kind of are gonna need that if you wanna go like four O plus. Jenny Wittus, hi guys, you guys are awesome. Wittus. Wittus, I'm sorry, Wittus. I, I never know how to pronounce your last name. You guys are awesome. I appreciate all your time, efforts and energy you give of yourself. You're Shout welcome, out to Jenny. Jenny. Jenny's welcome, a Jenny. close friend. So all right, wanted... Kathy. How is it best to play with players who don't think many bangers in my neighborhood bangers? She's meaning people that just like to hit the ball um, hard all the time. I try to slow it down because I can't keep up with the speed of bangers. So this is a very, very uh, common question that we have. Um, yeah, if you can't slow it down, well, if you could slow it down and and you're you're inviting them to play the dink game, yeah, I, I would suggest that. But if they're if they are just blowing you off the court with the speed of the ball, you're you're going to uh, unfortunately, like what Nicole said previously, you can't change um, you can't change other people for the most part. You only can control what you can control. So you're gonna have to practice handling those those balls that are hit hard at you i mean it's just part of the game and yeah um it's i, I could see why um, it would be frustrating to to play with some players just want to dink right some players want to play that kind of game and then some players get frustrated at the the players that only want to dink. they just want to hit the ball hard so like like we said in, in the beginning of this live live stream that um you know, to be a complete player, you have to be able to to hit, um, to learn the soft game and the hard game. So so with players that are, are doing that, you're going to have to um, learn how to handle that. And the best way, if you can't um, just, just volley it and draw them into the dink game, you're going to just have to just learn to volley um, the ball and just keep them back and keep keeping them back and, and not hit out balls. A lot, a lot of times bangers will just, they're just going to try to hit the ball and you're hitting balls way up here. If, it, if it's uh, above shoulder 
tight, you know, those balls probably are going out. So, you know, just doing that kind of thing. So that that's definitely um, something that I would suggest. Yep. Uh, just a little bit in addition to that. Basically, like to the key to beating bangers is not necessarily the soft game. It's keeping it low. Whether you keep it low soft or keep it low by like sticking the volley back at their feet, you, you want to get you want to force them to hit up. They want to hit it hard. So you're you're baiting them into pretty much hitting it out. That's like the strategy you want to go for. And whether that's I, that the two great strategies are low and soft so that they have to run up and then they're going to smack it either into the tape because the net's in the way or out or if you're struggling with taking all that pace off because yeah. that's a hard skill yeah. then just kind of poke it back at their feet deep and low yeah. if you're forcing them to hit up they're eventually going to hit it out so you just have to you're basically playing a game of like winning on their unforced errors out you're yeah. not don't try to hit any winners it's like they're going to gift you tons of points if you can just get them to hit up over and over and over Yep. Um, do you have any drills to help increase hand speed? We do. At look the net. look a at whole, our video. Quick hands a, at the net. Fast quick, hands at the net. Go. Fast yep. hands at the net or quick hands at the net. It's, it's We've done a video on that. That's probably one of my favorite drills to do. Oh, yep. and then, uh, yeah, and also how to beat bangers. Those are those are two videos that we have. Just go ahead and check that out. You've probably seen it before. But um, if you go to YouTube, you, there's a search box on our channel. It's only on the desktop version. There's a search box for the channel, so you can um, just type those things in, and the yeah. videos will come up. All right, George. Um, so a man hits a shot in the tape, and it falls over the net. How do you judge when this is about to happen, and how do you react when you see it falling? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to judge, man. Yeah. You just gotta, re you just gotta react. You have to be really fast, like me. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no. It's it's. Uh, I mean, when when that happens, yeah, you're you're almost, you know, you're at a very big disadvantage. But you can't really. You can't, you can't read, can't really it, read so it so much. You just gotta no. see it and move. Like yeah. I will tell a quick story, but like when I realized how fast this guy was, we were playing. <laughs> I was up at the non volley zone line. He was like somewhere behind me. I'm not sure where he was. He may have even been at you know, the baseline. Yeah. And like I was standing on the even side, and he was back there on the odd side, and it, it clipped the tape on his side yeah. and dropped over. And like there's no way I was gonna get to it. Like I didn't pick up on it. Yeah. I, and and I was pretty much giving up on the point. Next thing I know. Yeah. He like got it. I'm and I was sliding. Like, I was oh in. I was God. in. I was in no man's land. Okay, so you know, we came I'm in out no of nowhere. man's land, and, and the ball hit the tape and popped over, and I barely got over. Yeah, I like. I, the ball. I thought it was over. And next thing, but, I know, the ball but was basically, back over. yeah, it's hard. It's hard to plan for that, but uh, that's why it, it you know, it, it does benefit you being close to that non volley zone, though, right? Because it, yeah. you know, when those balls hit the tape, you're, you're at least right there. So yeah, um, it was. Uh, it was on the far side. <laughs> It's nowhere near it. Um, Wait, okay. How does one practice the ATP shot? We have a video, video on that. Don, Gio, uh, we really appreciate all your comments. I yes. think you comment us a lot. Um, we have one. It's called like the round the post shot or how to hit ATP. Yeah, ATP. round the post or ATP. That it's... you you just basically go cross court and and then you even if you're hitting the balls out, you're not even trying to because you're practicing with a partner. You know, forehand to forehand or backhand to backhand, you just hit really wide balls and don't worry that, about that ball going in. You want to get your partner, you want to get a ball to bounce and, and go past the net post. So, so we have a drill on that. Go check out that video around the post. Um, shot. All right. So we're coming up on the hour mark. I guess we'll just go we'll try and blow well, through let, the rest let's of just, these let's questions. Just, yeah, we'll just try to answer them um, a little bit. Quicker. All right. One strategy is to gang up on the one player during dinking, keeping going cross court back to him over and over. If he switches up to across the net, go across the net back to him, freeze out. Sure. That's a that is a good strategy. If you're in a tournament, not super rec play, you you know people tend to like to keep both players involved. But like yes, if you're in a tournament and the goal is to win and you're playing for medals or whatever, yep, yeah, that's a great strategy. I think that's nothing else to be said about that. Okay, uh, how do you get sponsored? And what is considered pro? Is pro based on your rating, or how many matches you win? Um, good question. Um, sponsored players. Usually the the paddle company will come up to you, um, but there's a lot of times where I think players have gone up to, like in, in tournament, you know how they have those, you know they have their merch and stuff like that. A lot of times you could talk to, um, 
talk to the sometimes the owners there of the company or sometimes their their reps but you know you could talk to them about getting sponsored what's considered pro that's kind of like a, a loose term right now it's not there's no definite um you know thing but you know per, professional means you do it for a living so there i mean in, in the technical aspect there's a lot of people who do pickleball for a living like teach and play so um based on how your rating it's um, not really based on ratings i mean five oh and above or i mean i guess could be considered pros but it's it's definitely a loose term as of right now i would say um yep all right um i have time to help with these those future plans as unpaid apprentice thanks josh wow. all right well josh we where, where do you, you where do you live <laughs> first of all okay so just send us send us a send us a facebook message or something thanks for that josh <laughs> Um, what I'm referring to with the lob is to get the opponent back. Yes, yeah. uh, we think we covered that. Thanks for all the training. Great. Okay, here we go. On a serve, does the receiver have to be behind the baseline and not straddling, straddling the center line, or can they be wherever they wish to be on the court? On the serve, does the receiver... Okay, the receiver could be anywhere. It, it doesn't matter. So both, both the the team, uh, first, both the person hitting the ball and his partner, it doesn't matter where you're, where you're standing. All right, don't give away all your strategy tips. Okay, we have lots more, don't worry. <laughs> the lob gets them back. And, okay, this, uh, oh wait, this is uh, George. The drop is a little high. Okay, that gets them back and forces them to reset the point with the drop shot. If the drop is a little high, you can cut it across court and soft or put it at their feet. What's your strategy? Oh, okay, so basically what's your strategy for return? Um, returning a lob. Oh. Returning a lob. Oh, returning a lob. Uh, strategy on returning the lob. Uh, so there's two there's two that I think um, that are the best thing to do. The the first and best option would be uh, number one to drop it back into the kitchen. So a soft shot into the non volley zone. So if you're running back, I would suggest that your your partner probably um, backs up or runs back with you and hit that soft shot into the kitchen because that will allow you to to you know get time to, to get set your, your feet and also to come up to the non-volley zone. Obviously, that's the hardest shot. You're, you're running back and then you're trying to hit this soft um, shot into the kitchen. So I would say, you know, sometimes I, I would just throw up another lob and just a defensive lob. So really, really high. And, um, and just to get me and my partner back in, in, in position. So that's an option. That's Great. We may have misunderstood this. He might be saying, what do you do with, okay, you push them back, they hit a drop, and their drop's a bit high. Then what do you do? I think maybe that's what he's asking. When you've got them back, how uh -huh. do you keep them back? So, okay, if that's what you're asking, and they've dropped it back in the kitchen and it's high, they're back. I'm assuming they're back at this point, as they should be. You're going to try to keep them deep, get them in a defensive position, yeah. and then, yeah, maybe hit a little soft angle, or if you create an opening, hit a drive, driving kind of winner at that point i hope that's what you're okay. asking sorry i see some pickleball players now using two-handed backhand what do you think about that um a lot of players that you see probably 99 percent of the players you see hitting with a two-hander is probably comes from their tennis background um i think that there definitely is some advantages to it um every player i wouldn't suggest it for for everyone but um, you can you can try it out. I mean, what, what do you what do you think, Nicole? Um, There's definitely some advantages with the two-handed backhand, but I yeah. think definitely like like for me, dinking, okay, my returns, everything like that. I, I hit with one hand. The only time I really use a two-hander, which I've been actually just trying to add to my game, is 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 driving the ball on on the uh, backhand side. Uh, I could drive it with one hander, but you know, it, it, it just kind of just depends. If you're, yeah, if you're, okay, so I, I'm, I was a one-handed tennis player, so I don't hit anything with two hands, but I do understand it. So if you um, are at the net, dinking and falling and everything, you definitely want to learn how to do everything with yeah. one hand, no question. The only time you, we see a lot of players, if they're two-handed coming from tennis, have a great like swing volley two hands yeah. that they can do fast. So but, yeah, it gives them a lot more power. Like let's say you don't have a lot of power like this. It could yeah. give you a lot more power on the backhand side. So, I would say really the only time where I would consider developing like a two-hander, not for myself, but for someone who may be struggling with a ground stroke backhand, yeah. that might be where you, that because it's more, it's a bit more stable and easier yeah. because you have that, 
extra hand there. Also, it's the back arm, so it's like pushing. So it's like kind of like a lefty forehand. So that could help you out. But I mean, that's really all I've got on that here. Okay, when both teams are at the non-volley zone and opponents hit wide a wide shot to my backhand, it's tough to return the ball over the net without popping it up for a slam. Yeah. Um, yeah, that <laughs> yeah. Is, yeah, if they hit. So we just talked about this earlier, just to, just to run through the question quickly. Um, yeah, when they're hitting, he's talking about when they're hitting the, like maybe a very – hard slice dink but to his backhand slide probably cross court is most likely what jay's referring to um you just at first you don't want to give him those angles so to, to try to prevent that shot you don't want to keep hitting um an angle to his backhand so he could slice it even more so like we said before dinking more towards his body or towards the middle of the court is going to help out on that and jay like honestly um, uh, just about everybody struggles with like yeah. their backhand. Well, a lot of people don't, but that's when because they've drilled the heck out of it. Like if you're getting pressed wide on your backhand and that's something you struggle with, like you just have to drill it. Yeah. Like yeah, as you're moving, when you're moving on the run, hitting a shot, it's hard, but it's a skill that can be developed. So I would suggest like drilling it, like yeah. drill inside and then move, and then you you can keep that ball low. It's just that you can't control it yet. So one thing is when people run, they kind of tend to like do that. So you really still got to try to use your shoulder and control it on the move. Like it's all about stability up here as your legs are moving fast. So get out there, yep. you just got to drill it. And then what I was going to say is, is yeah, getting your feet set in position first. Cause like what Nicole just said, if you're moving and hitting the shot, it's really just hard to control. If you read his, his wide shot earlier or his or her wide shot earlier, you get, you know, you move quick, you sidestep or, or, um, move to the side and then you, you get in position early and get and hit that shot. That would help a lot out a lot. All right. So okay, so we'll we'll try to hit these last few like few questions real quick and then we're gonna get to the prize yeah. giveaway. When if ever should sides been be implemented to, to mix it up? I mean like mostly I would say like ninety, ninety five percent of the time you're gonna hit top spin or like kind of pure under spin. But if you see that they're pretty like in tune to that and you can come in and you have a good opportunity to like cut it side spin you might draw an error out of that because they might not read it correctly. Like that's, it's more of like a mix it in like five to 10% of the time than something you want to use like on every single shot. Rich Lopez, love it. Thanks, Rich. Shout out to Rich Lopez who had the, the best get I've ever seen in pickleball at the Lakes tournament <laughs> recently. Um, okay. When you came back to Sacramento, <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. Um, Soon, hopefully. Can you please, Rich, again, can you please show more defensive strategies, how to read and defend Ernie's and ATPs? Yeah, thanks, Rich. We can um, definitely look into some videos on that. Oh, okay, great, great. Yeah. That's all the questions. Oh, one more. Okay, last one. How do we contribute money oh, to you guys? Thank you, thank we you so guys so much. That. Right now, we are, you know, we're so appreciative of every everybody who um, follows us. I mean, we just, well, all we ask is that, you know, you just continue to keep watching our videos and sharing them sharing them with friends and you know leaving liking them and commenting on them that's really what what help us out helps us out the most and to grow this um game of pickleball um, yeah, together you, and yeah that that's would really help exactly Thank you right guys so and much okay so aside from money one of the things you could definitely do to help us out which we'd really appreciate is if we've helped you improve your game big or small is if you could Go to this link that I'm about to drop in the comments yeah. and let us know specifically um, there. There's like a survey. Let us know how we've helped your game, and that would be super helpful to us. So if you could follow that link and just share your story with us, we would really appreciate that. That would help us out a lot. Um, uh, okay, so one other thing. So I guess time for the prize okay. giveaway now. Yeah, let's just do that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I know um, it was it's been over an hour, but yeah, for those of you here that are here right now live with us, uh, you guys have a chance to win uh, some primetime pickleball shirts. So yeah. let's get started. We're gonna do some trivia, pickleball trivia. We're gonna ask some questions. Some of these are easy, but some of them are hard. So we'll just see. Uh, we'll just see yep. what happens. But uh, yeah. So okay, so we're gonna get started, get started but, uh, just before we do that. I want to say thank you still for still being here with us uh an hour and 10 minutes into it the prize giveaway is the last thing uh we want to say thank you to our sponsors dinkty.com uh 
they produce really fun and awesome pickleball apparel. They also produce our shirts and they also can do shirts for your tournament. So check dingtea.com out. Also thanks to Engage Pickleball, our sponsors who um, pr provide and produce just awesome pickleball equipment. We love their paddles and all their gear. All right, so, okay, here we go. Let's do it. So we're giving away primetime shirts. I'm gonna hold them up for it. So Jordan's gonna ask a question and the first person to correctly um, comment correctly comment with the answer is yes. going to win the shirt and you once if you're a winner please email us at primetimepickleball at gmail.com with uh, your address and we'll send you the yeah. shirt okay so I'm gonna hold up the shirt it's specific shirt specific size specific color and this next question is for this shirt, uh, this shirt yes. which is a gray men's large um, gray, yeah, gray men's large gray men's large the red logo primetime pickleball primetime shirt exclusive shirt first question okay here we go pickleball is often described as a combination of these three sports what are the three sports okay so there we go there's a the first question no people are still with us i know how so pickleball is often described as a combination of these three sports what are the three sports all right I hope this is just okay. Here we go. Chess, ping pong, oh, and tennis. That's close. There we go. All right. John. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Okay. So the first person that got it is John. John B. B. Badminton, tennis, and ping pong or table tennis. Yes. That's correct. That's correct. All right, John B. Please email us primetimepickleball.com. Primetime no, no. Primetimepickleball at gmail.com. At gmail .com. With your address, we will send you this shirt. Yeah. If you're a winner, uh, email us primetime pickleball at gmail.com. Is that it? Yes. Okay. All okay. right. Question number two. In what year? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh. This oh, oh. question is for this lovely pink uh, women's medium shirt. Women's medium primetime pink pickleball women's medium exclusive medium shirt. Okay. Prime time shirt. Here we go. In what year and where was the game of pickleball invented? Year and location. location. And location. Pauline, you missed location. You need both. You need both. You need year and location. But where? Oh, where? Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> we got a lot of people saying the right answer. Oh, I think because the this is from before I went. Wait, what? Okay, wait. Oh, Colleen. Okay. Colleen got you it. know what? Yeah, we'll give the we'll Colleen give it the call. Colleen. Got both. Mendoza. Thank you so much. Email us. Email us, and then yes. we will send you a shirt. Include your um, YouTube name if you could. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was Colleen. Okay, Mendoza. Mendoza. Thank okay. You. Here we go. Number three. Hang on. Hang on. The shirt. Question number three. Is for this blue extra large. Extra large. Prime time shirt. Ball shirt. Beautiful. Dry fit. By, by the way, all these are all these dry, are dry fit. fit. These are all top notch. Okay. Anyways. Okay. Question number three. Um. When pick this is a hard one. When pickleball was first invented, they used wooden paddles. In what year were composite paddles introduced to the game? Okay, if anyone knows this, that's some serious pickleball knowledge. What year were composite paddles introduced to the sport of pickleball? What year? You guys could just go ahead and take guesses. Yeah. You know. If you don't know. Just go ahead. I'm just gonna take the first correct guess. Oh shoot! Oh wait, no, no one no. got it. Oh wait, no. Nineteen eighty-four to Josh. Josh, all right. Good Josh. job, Josh. Even if you Google that answer, that was awesome. Because <laughs> nineteen eighty-four is when the first composite That's paddle was cool. made. And thank you. Shout out to Steve Peranto for giving me some of these <laughs> questions. All right, Steve. Okay, next. Hang on. All right, next is ta-da. All right. Uh, this Light blue, Light blue women's, baby blue, women's medium, medium, exclusive, exclusive, dry fit, primetime pickleball shirt. Okay, number four. Which player is the Ernie shot named after? Which player? What's his name? The Ernie shot. E N R E. I'm so glad I mean, e -N with us. E R N E. Okay. It's See a it. delay. I'm sure it's. I know it's a delay. What's the name of the player that the Ernie shot was named after? Oh, Robin. Robin Maloney. Maloney. 
has won. Congratulations. Great job. Bernie Great Perry. job, Robin. All right, don't forget winners. Email us at primetimepickleball primetime at gmail.com gmail with com. your address. Congratulations, and Robin. Thank you so much. Question number five. Hang on to next is a medium gray with red logo men's dry fit shirt. Exclusive. Exclusive, medium, gray. Primetime pickleball club. All right. Uh, originally, you could serve, you could legally serve with one foot inside the baseline. Why is this? That's it. I had no idea. So Originally, you can legally serve with one foot inside the baseline. Why is this? Rich Lopez, Ernesto Lopez. Nice try, Rich. That's pretty funny. Need All right. XXL men's shirt. Sorry. This is going to be a, a pretty tough question. Um, only true pickleball addicts would know this. I didn't even know this, so I'm not even. For kids' advantage. Mm. Good guess, unfortunately. Yeah, you know, we're just just throw your guesses out there. Um, we might okay. If no one knows the real answer, we're gonna go with the most creative guess. Prime time's favorite answer. Ooh, hold on, we got some good answers. Okay, we got some pretty good answers. We're gonna wait. I think like 15 more seconds. If no one knows the real answer, we're gonna go with the most creative answer, or the closest answer. Oh, someone got it. Where? Oh my gosh, yes. Ozark's Paddle Sports. Oh, Is that a paddle company? Ozark's under? Paddle Sports. Because the tree. tree crowded the baseline on the original court. Wow. Yes, right. so in the original pickleball court, there was a tree. I don't know how far it was from the baseline, but it was very close. And you could legally serve with one foot uh, behind the baseline and one foot in. Congratulations, Ozarks Paddle Sports. Way to know your pickleball trivia. All That's right, impressive. question number, is this six? Uh, yes. Next so. question. Is for a large blue primetime prime pickleball shirt, exclusive men's. men's dry fit shirt. Here we go. Next question. Mathematicians. How many square feet is a pickleball court? Ooh, square square feet. feet. Square feet. I don't want to know the width or the length. The I want to know area. the square footage. Okay? For this lovely dry fit blue. I love this blue. All right, we're getting a little lag. It's okay. We're going to get a lot of answers coming in. People are on there. Too many. That was oh. a good one. Nope. Nope. Square footage. Oh. All right. Sale. 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 Camaraderie. Camaraderie. Okay. All right. It's 880. Okay. 44 feet long, 20 feet ride, wide. You multiply them, and they have a baby, and it's 880 square feet. All right. All right. Next is this baby blue baby blue women's medium exclusive dry fit primetime pickleball shirt here we go next question listen up who are last year's 2018 mixed doubles pro u.s open champions last year's 2018 mixed doubles pro u.s open champions who are they they're big names in the game of pickleball huge names who are they? For this beautiful light blue shirt. Argu arguably some of the best ga um, players in the game right now. It is not Tyson and Sarah. Mixed doubles. Talk about mixed doubles here. Yeah, they're mean. It's not Tyson and Sarah. It's not Sarah and Dave. Someone said we answered 880. Oh. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll look. we're gonna we're gonna. Okay. So Harry Hutchins, you are correct. You are the winner. Kyle Yates and Simone Jarjean. Okay, Harry. I'm gonna You can you know give this shirt to. Shout you. out to Kyle and a Simone. Significant woman in your life. Here you go. Congratulations. Shout out to them. Awesome players. Yes. Good okay. Time. This is going to be a tough wow, one. We, we're still rocking. We're still rocking. Here we go. Okay. Next, next shirt up. Men's extra large. Extra large. Gray primetime shirt. Extra, extra large, large. Extra exclusive dry fit primetime pickleball shirt. Here we go. Next question. In last year's 2018 Nationals, okay, what shot did Ben Johns hit for the winning shot to take the gold? Metal home. 
True pickleball okay. fans. What shot did Ben Johns hit for the for the winning shot? 2018 Nationals. My wife Last will year. love it. I'm glad, Harry. Perfect. Wasn't a lob. Nope. Wasn't an ATP. Nope. Okay, I'm, I, I want a specific one, but I'll take. Okay, if anyone could could elaborate on the shot, I'm gonna get 15 seconds. If you could elaborate on the exact shot that he hit, I'll give it to that. But if not, I'm gonna pick. Uh, let's see, 10 seconds. So would it be this one? It would be. Okay, so she's okay, so I'll just give it a few more seconds. All right, so. Mmm. Hold on. Oh. Wow. Did he win already? Uh, Did that guy win? No. He didn't? I don't think so. No. Okay, you know what? I should have said, you know what? I wanted to do the closest um, to the exact shot, and it was it, it was the backhand. It was a jumping backhand Ernie. So, so we're so going to give it to George. Congratulations, okay? George. Wow. It was a George. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen that shot um, to win the gold, it was pretty dope. Uh, it was probably one of the. It's actually a shot I've been working on. Develop a backhand jumping, uh, Ernie from the outside. Of the All court. right, good, good job. That's a really good. Uh, Thanks, George. Answer um, tough one. Yeah, sorry guys for all you. Okay. Tried. All right. Next for this lovely pink women's medium. So for you, or maybe sure. a significant other. Or a for you or uh, the woman in your life, or like a daughter, mother, girlfriend. You could actually wife. give these shirts out and be like, "Hey, if, if you be my mix partner, <laughs> there you go. I'll give you this shirt. If you be my mix partner because this is like this is like exclusive stuff." Okay, wait, what size? Medium, Me medium women's. women's. How many holes are in the outdoor Dura Ball? How many holes? We should have added music to this. It would have been Copyright more Copyright violation. Jamming. Oh, I should have brought my guitar out. I play oh, guitar and that. piano. Yeah, that's I, what I should, have. should have done. 40, John B. Oh, but John B won already. John, wait, you know what? Should we, we'll should just we, give it to him. We didn't say we're gonna it. Give it to yep. We were going to, you know what, John? We were going to say that only one person could win one prize. But we failed to mention that. So we, you know what, John? We're gonna send you your t-shirts. You're just too fast. Too fast. Your fingers are just too good. You must have awesome. Fingers. Last question. This is for a. Okay, here we go. Medium. Men's um, blue. Medium, medium men's, men's blue. blue. Prime time pickleball exclusive. Dry fit shirt. Here we go. What month and year was our first prime time pickleball video published? Month and year. Month, month and, and year. Did Prime Time publish its and time and, and location? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Just the month and the year. <laughs> wow, I must be delayed. Yeah, sorry guys. If you have bad connection, yeah, you're probably late. This is. Oh, that's. Interesting. I, you know what? We we didn't think of that, but well, yeah. Well, there's no it, way for us to fix that. So yeah. sorry. Sorry, you guys just need to get step up your connection game. <laughs> I guess. I guess. You know. Okay. What month and year was the first primetime pickleball uh, video published on YouTube.com? Oh, so far this is close. No. Nope, Wait, no, that's not right. Nope. So far, nope. You could just, uh, oh, you know, shirt down. Sorry, this you could just go this on. Shirt. Uh, you could just, um, January 2017. No, oh, we got it. Oh, pickleball pickle librarian. librarian. Shout out to the yeah. library of pickleball, the pickleball librarian. Um, I don't know. I think, He's, his name, I think his it's name? Andrew Evans. Is that right? Okay. If I've seen your stuff, dude. Yeah, we've seen your stuff. Hey, we, awesome. We Thank you for you. supporting us. Um, yeah. You I've seen you wearing actually a great primetime shirt, so thanks for that. Okay, so um, that's it, guys and girls. All right, that brings us to our conclusion. At, okay, but almost coming on an hour and a half. So, yeah, that's thanks so much for sticking around with us this long. We're going to 
wrap it up. His name is DW. Yes, Andrew Evans, we love you guys too. I hope that's his name is DW. Okay, whatever. Um, thanks so much for staying with us this long. Uh, congratulations to all the winners. We hope this uh, has been super helpful um, for you guys and that we answered all your questions. Uh, Feel free to drop us questions in any of the YouTube comments, and we get back. We we answer all those questions. Um, if you didn't win a prize and you want a primetime shirt, they are available for, for sale at ptpgear.com. So that's ptpgear.com. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you guys, everybody, so much um, for supporting us. We're just you know our end goal is to grow this game and to uh, just help people out and become the best players that they can be. So thank you guys so much. Someone said to repeat the email. So it's primetimepickleball at gmail.com, primetimepickleball at gmail.com. Yes, if you want a shirt, um, that's the email you send it to. Thank you, guys. It's been a blast, and we're signing out, and we will do another one of these um, again. At some point. We definitely I'm not sure will. when. It's in the three, it's within the three-year plan. We'll say that. In the next ten years, we will <laughs> definitely some time, do within the next another 10 years. live stream. All right, thanks, guys. Right. We're gonna let you enjoy the rest See of you your guys, Saturday. See you guys. Have a great Saturday. Thanks for watching Prime Thanks for Time. watching. And Bye.